Hey, Empowered Nurse Entrepreneurs. It's Lori Brown, nurse attorney, with our series on Hey Nurses, What's Next? How 21 Nurses, now part two, how several nurses became nurses and business owners and successful entrepreneurs. And today we're talking to Natasha Davis with Impact Branding. Welcome, Natasha. Thank you so much. I am so excited to be here, Lori. Thank you for having me. Well, I'm so glad that you're here because um, I know personally I've worked with you and I think you're amazing oh, and I can't wait to hear what you share with everybody. Thank so, you. Um, could you please tell uh, our listeners about your business? Absolutely. So my business is a strategic planning company and we do end-to-end and strategic planning, we evaluate performance and efficiency of day-to-day -day operations. And the main focus that we hone into is making sure that the company not only performs well for the end of the year, but also is performing very well each and every single day. And at the end of our workload or the end of our task, at the end of our project, we make sure that our clients, they have more time, more money, more clients, and they also have better processes. They're more streamlined. That sounds amazing. Um, so how did you be, go from nurse to business owner? <laughs> well, as many of us know, in nursing, we were taught to save lives. We were taught to critically think. We were taught to make decisions. And one of the things I found while I was still in nursing is that I, was, I wasn't tapping into this extra piece of uh, the gift that I had. And so my primary profession in nursing was emergency nursing and trauma nursing. Loved it very much, but I got to this place where I felt like there was a piece of me missing. I was empty. And I crossed over into business. I should say I dabbled into business a little bit because I really didn't know if I had what it took to be a business owner. I mean, after all, what do they say? I'm just a nurse. All right, you're frozen here. And then I realized there was more to me than what I thought. I had the ability to, wait, am I still frozen? Wait, let's am start I still frozen? Um, your story. How did you become a business owner? And we'll just okay. look at this. Okay. So becoming, a, going from nursing to business, my first profession was emergency nursing and trauma nursing and enjoyed that very much. And like much of us in nursing, Nursing, we were taught how to critically think. We were taught how to prioritize, manage projects, which is patient loads, and also to make decisions. Once I got to the place where I felt completely empty and I felt like I've run my course of the skill that I had, I realized that there was a piece of me that was missing that I could now bring into the marketplace even though I dabbled in it because I thought I was just a nurse, um, not realizing I had way more power in my hands and in my brain than most people had when they went into business. And so I fast forward, I crossed over into the business arena and I stepped into doing mostly business strategy, uh, not so much branding at that time, but business strategy and process improvement because that is what we did in um, nursing and in the emergency room. We made things move, made things move. Wow, so you took your same exact skills that you used in nursing and put them in a business context. Absolutely. And it was the best thing I could have ever done. And again, I had no idea the power that nurses have um, is beyond our imagination. And once we can tap into that, we'd be surprised what we can do. Um, nurses can literally work in any industry that we think of because we've been trained for those things. We just didn't know it until you step out and try it. Is that, I don't know any other like branding and strategy specialist um, other than you. So it's... Um really unique. A lot of nurses choose to go into the traditional like coaching, mm -hmm. wellness, health, nutrition, coaching, and uh, um, but it's unusual to have a nurse go into the, the process and the systems and the branding. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's very interesting. It is a different, different perspective. I say at, in that time when I was at the bedside, I was saving lives. Now what I do is I save companies and I apply the same, I, I mean, we have algorithms, we have processes, we have regimens that we, we uh, prescribe to um, our clients because what we realize is that there's no one business is the same. And you may be in the same industry, but you have different needs and you're, we come to heal. And, and because I am a nurse at heart, it is my heart to heal and to help. 
And so I was able to package that as a business and as a, a well-needed service. And so I can deliver that. Um, but crossing into branding was a, a very interesting place because the only thing I knew was business and business strategy. And I was introduced to this branding concept, which at the time I thought was marketing. And I spent years, about close to eight years, continuing to study branding and how to implement it correctly. And um, that's what makes me different and unique. Um, I'm not a marketing agency, a PR agency, or anything of the sort. We are truly a branding company, and we do strategic planning. What, what I think is so interesting about you is I am very big picture. I can see the vision, and I can create the steps to get there, but I am not a systems person with the minute step-by-step -step details. I can right. see the, the big steps, but not the itsy bitsy steps. So yeah. I, I think that's important for people to recognize is what are your strengths? And um, Natasha played to her strengths, and um, which, which has been amazing for her. Um, yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. And, that, and that's a big thing. And um, I remember it was a couple years in, um, I've been in business going on 18 years now. And um, I remember one day just sitting down and, and saying to myself, what am I really good at? You know, I mean, I'm good at this other stuff, but what am I really good at? What, what excites me? What, what gets my brain just moving? And the thing that gets my brain really churning is strategy and process, like down to step one, step two, the if this, then that, cause and effect. And I believe that came from my love of emergency nursing because I always wanted to find out what's wrong and we would take the steps and say, the if this and that, the cause and effect. Well, this happened, but what happened before that? What caused this and how can we fix it? And did we do this to fix this problem? And so I crossed that same uh, skill over into, into business and helping companies to find that. Most visionaries are big pictures, the big picture persons, I should say. And it's not their responsibility to get down to the, the sticks and the weeds and the minutia. It's not, everyone's not built like that. Yeah. So um, that's where I come in. <laughs> well, I'm thankful that you're out there to help nurses Thanks. and others. So what do you like best about having your own business? You know, I honestly, you know, the cliche is I'm my own boss. Well, truth be told, that's not always a good thing. <laughs> I always joke, my boss is so mean. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I do. I said, man, my boss is a woo, slave driver she is, man. I'm telling you. But, you know, truth be told that that's not the biggest thing that I'm my own boss. It's not that I have true autonomy to my schedule. Because, honestly, I work longer and harder now than I did when I was working in the emergency room, my 12-hour shifts. Um, because now I'm accountable to myself. And I'm accountable to clients because people are depending on me to save their entire world. You know, where we were saving a life, and it means different, it has a different meaning. When someone puts their heart and soul into the business, that's their everything. And their hope is just, I'm, I'm, my hope is, help me, that's what people want, help me, give me what I need. And so truly the best thing for me and what I enjoy, what gets me up every morning, what excites me, what sets me on fire, is my ability to uncomplicate this journey for executives, for leaders, for business owners, to allow them to see in their hands and, and before them what they thought, to give them the reassurance, you did get it right. You did get it right. And, and that light bulb, you know when that light bulb goes off and the person is like, oh, wow, I never even thought about that. And to see that sense of, hope and possibility come across somebody's face and just their whole it just changes the whole thing that invigorates me every single day every day yeah that's amazing that's wonderful um so what has been your biggest challenge in being a business owner wow let's see this year <laughs> <laughs> no um honestly one of the biggest challenges that i could say is in the beginning I, I really didn't know anything about being a business owner, an entrepreneur. I didn't know anything about it. I just knew I had this thing I wanted to do and I wanted to help people. I wanted to help everybody. And I realized that, you know, that quickly came, you know, to a crashing end when you had no money because um, 
you know, at the end of the day, people's like, oh, you're cute. Yeah, I'll take the service. And they didn't want to pay you. <laughs> so my, my biggest challenge was learning how to create a happy balance. Yes, I still have a heart to serve and a heart to help and a heart to give. But I also had to put on my business owner hats and realize that I am running a company. And not only are clients, I'm responsible to clients, but I'm also resp responsible to a staff, to a team. And my biggest that was one of my biggest challenges was learning how to be a business owner. And, and I, I say this often, there's a difference between being self-employed, being an entrepreneur and being a business owner. And when I learned that, I realized I needed to stop being self-employed and I had to graduate out of being an entrepreneur. And several years ago, I graduated to being a business owner and every day I keep learning. Um, my biggest challenge I fight with still every day, because as a nurse, we're givers, sales, sales, and just sales. Like I am not a salesperson. I'm not that, I'm not that car salesperson. I can't, I can't sell ice to the Eskimo. Like I can't, because at that point, I'm like, just give it to him. He, he just needs it, you know? <laughs> but that's my learning curve. I'm always investing in learning the principles of effective sales, because in business, we all have to sell. You have to know how to sell. And I had to learn how to make it my own, that I didn't have to become the, the sleazy car salesman, as, as you know, cliche would have it. So I had to learn how to sell, how to sell what it is that I'm, what I'm helping people with. Yeah. Um, that's a great point because as nurses, we come with the room um, mm -hmm. and we don't have to sell our services. And now mm -hmm. we're in a position where we don't eat if we don't um, get crying. Exactly. Exactly. And it's realizing our worth that yeah. we have such a valuable service to offer. And I think, um, you know, for the services that we provide, the people get, you know, 10, 20, 100 times the value that we, that they pay for it. Um, right. And then the other thing is that um, I used to, I was working at a law firm as a partner. And I mm -hmm. asked one of the partners who had very prestigious clients, how did you get all these clients? And he said, um, he said, all you have to do is ask, everyone wants to help. And so that changed everything for me is that um, I get to ask people um, to work with me and share the value that I can provide. And I don't have to do it the way he does it with martinis, golf, and, and <laughs> you can make it your own. <laughs> yeah, I do, it, I do it my way. I do yes. it the way that feels good to me. And that, um, and I choose not to call it sales. I choose to call it enrolling because, um, because I'm not selling them anything. I am showing them a possibility. And if they think I have what it takes to help them, then I'll enroll them. Exactly. I agree. I agree. And I think that's the thing that resonated with me most. Um, I went to several, oh, cause I struggled so much with asking for business. I, I struggled with it. Um, and I, I invested in several sales training. Some of them I liked, some of them I didn't. And then what I did is I took a culmination of the best parts and realized, you know what? This is me. This works for me. And exactly what you said, um, I, you know, Lori, it's not about, I'm not selling you anything. I'm offering you an opportunity to get the help you need. I'm offering you the opportunity to solve the problem. I'm offering you the opportunity to fix what's wrong, you know, to alleviate the pain, to remove the frustration, to, I'm offering you the, the journey to grow your company, to stop bleeding cash, to, you know, fix the team. So I really come from that space of what's wrong and Here's the opportunity to fix. Now, the other thing that I found that helps me that, you know, lets me sleep well at night is I actually developed um, an inclusion exclusion criteria where I would clearly say these are the type of persons that I do not work with, that I do not provide service to, that, that I do not stand shoulder to shoulder with to partner with or to support. And when I developed that inclusion exclusion criteria, it made things so much easier because if they didn't fit, then I had to exclude them because in all fairness, I would not serve them well and they would not serve impact branding and my team well either. So having an inclusion exclusion criteria is going to be huge because it gives you justification what to say no to and what to say yes to. Yeah, um, I, I agree completely. We have the same thing. There are certain clients that we won't take their case just because, or we won't take them in the business school. And um, 
one of the things that I always say is um, check, just um, check in with your gut. And uh, if your gut says this isn't the right fit, as much as you need the money, it is not worth it. Exactly. If you drag them in, you have to drag them around, is what I say. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one, but drag you in, I got to drag you out. Exactly. Yeah. I, love so I don't sell uh, because, you know, I want people to be excited and, and right. ready to work with me. Yeah, and we should, as business owners, we should. You, you should want to work, because being in business is, I have a choice. We now have a choice, and I can choose who I want to work with, and as well as they choose who they want to work with. So because we have a choice, that's a choice that we have to hold on to. That's one of the most beautiful things in business. We can now choose. We don't have to say yes to everyone. Right. I mean, don't work with someone who's going to make you miserable and stressed out. That defeats the purpose. And I've said that before. If you're going to be miserable, you might as well go back to work at the bedside. And, you know, that's what I say. You can't choose your patients. And yeah. you know, that patient that drives you crazy, you still have to take them if they're assigned to you. Mm -hmm. And in business, at least you can. You can exactly. choose who you want to work with. You can choose who makes, I call them soulmate clients. You know, exactly. who, who I love that. that thing. I love it. Good yeah. stuff. Um, so what was your biggest mistake in business? Ooh, let's tell it, Lori. Let's tell it. Well, let's see. Hmm, which one? Uh, no, we all make really crazy mistakes because we don't know. But um, one important mistake that I made was I borrowed money in the beginning to start my business. And that was, the, that was not a good decision. It was not a smart decision because I didn't have a plan for that money. And I quickly learned that if you have to borrow money to get the business running, you're not ready to start that business. If you don't have the ability to sell your products or services to begin to generate income, you're not ready. You're not ready. And also, if you're going to borrow money whenever, you have to have a plan for every single dollar. People don't lend money. Investors don't give money. Banks don't give money for you to stick it in the bank account and look at it and, and, and salivate over it. They, they disseminate money for you to deploy it. And you want to deploy it in the right way. And that was one of the biggest mistakes. That was a, a lesson that I learned the hard way. Because number one, I started a company and automatically put financial distress on the company. And so I had a debt uh, on the company. There was no way I could have had walked into a business that had assets or capital. I had debt and I, I financially stressed the company. Then after that, again, I didn't have a plan for every dollar. I really didn't have it. I didn't know, well, what did I need all this money for and where exactly it's going to go? Here's the third thing I didn't do. I really didn't have a plan for how I was going to make that money back at least three exit or four exit because I have to pay it back with interest. Plus, I still had to run the business. And yeah. so that was a huge mistake. And that's actually something that I do not advocate with my clients. Uh, we actually put a plan in place to generate capital. I would rather uh, do sponsors to bring capital in. We do capital fundraisers, things like that. If it's a nonprofit, we do straight fundraisers. But I don't advocate that we take out loans to start a business. And oddly enough, I had a client I had a, a, a potential client the other day uh, that I spoke with and she has a product line that she's launching and she wants to go and she wanted to pull a $500,000 SBA loan. And I said to her, it's not necessary. And she couldn't understand why I did not need the loan. Well, where am I going to get the money from? I said, sell the products. And it was the hardest thing because she's been sitting with lenders upon lenders and, she, and she's been going to classes and the only thing they've been saying to her you need to get an SBA loan. You need to get a business loan. You need to get a business loan. So the only thing she thought is I have to get a business loan. Yeah. We talked about the strategy that we would implement in order to not get the business loan. And we did a budget for what she really needed, which also included her salary. And it made perfect sense. She did not need $500,000 to start. And we had a clear plan of how she's going to launch, sell your products over this length of time, the funds will come in and then you will allocate it that way. That light bulb went on for her and she was, I mean, she had like total relief. It was totally cathartic for her to realize I don't have to take this loan. I don't need this money. So it was very, very uh, empowering for her and for me too, because so, I was able to help her and prevent her from getting into a, a financially detrimental situation. $500,000 is a lot of money to have to pay. Yeah. 
Yeah. Now, if you, you know, at nurses, we don't know the business skills. And if you need to take a little money out to learn the business skills, that's one thing because you're going to get a return on your investment. Right. But right. Um, 500000 no. You could pre-fill the product. There's a lot of things you can do. Sell it. Exactly. Change the business model. Look at the plan. Look at the strategy. But a lot of times in business, people will look for the easy way in, but they also look for the easy way out. And though business is very rewarding, there's nothing easy about it. If it was easy, then everyone would do it and everyone would be able to keep up with it. You yeah. know, about in consistency and intentional focus and being committed to your own commitment. And that's really what it is. There are some very hard days in business, but there's also some very rewarding days in business. Mm -hmm. you, you take it as it comes and you keep it going. Absolutely. And we were talking about mistakes and I always say that, um, you know, 80% of your decisions are going to be wrong. They just are. <laughs> You're going to make a lot of mistakes. <laughs> and that's okay. You know, you make a decision, then you make it right. If it's not working, mm -hmm. You cut bait. If it's working, awesome. Repeat it. Exactly. Do it again. <laughs> again. Do it again. Exactly. And you if you don't make a mistake, I mean, you're not trying anything. And how will you learn? And I, one of the things I like to advocate for, we do business plans a little bit differently. We don't do business plans that are, you know, beautiful, thick binders of pretty paper with pretty pictures that sit on the desk. Um, the way that we do business plans, we actually call them plan of action. And we have a, a it, it's a ever living document. It's referred to for day-to-day -day operations and it's referred to every single quarter to evaluate the outgoing quarter and the incoming quarter. It keeps people focused um, and prevents them from wasting entire year doing nothing. Mm -hmm. It's quick. Yeah, great. Um, and what advice would you give for nurses who are thinking about starting a business? Do it! <laughs> yeah. No, I would definitely say the first thing I would say is honestly, you got to start believing in yourself. Believe in yourself that you can do it. You're more than just a nurse. The thing is, take the just off. You are a nurse. And as a nurse, you have been educated and equipped and empowered to do wonderful things. You have skills that you didn't even know that you had that people would pay hundreds and thousands of dollars for. You have the ability to evaluate things on a completely different perspective. So I would say believe in yourself and don't be afraid to step out. The next thing I would say is one of the things and one of the other mistakes that I did make was I did not seek a coach or help when I transitioned. And I didn't do it for the first five to seven years. And I'm going to tell you with all due respect, it was the hardest four to five years of my life. It was pure hell because I didn't know what I was doing and I had no way of understanding this climate. So I would recommend get a business coach, someone to guide you along the way because it's no different than having a preceptor when you started working at a hospital, when you got out of nursing school, when you started a new job, you were on a new floor. If you used to be in labor and delivery, now you're in ICU, you had a preceptor. So it's no different in business. In business, you need a preceptor. You need a mentor. You need a coach that's going to help you to avoid those big, massive mistakes as much as possible. And they're going to help shorten your learning curve because this is a different world. It's a different language. And you have to have a different posture when you step into business. It's not the same. So if I could give you any, I mean, I can, I can roll out a bunch of results, get a business plan, have a strategy. I can tell you all of that. But my main thing is, A, believe in yourself. And B, get a preceptor, get a business coach, get a mentor, get someone who is going to believe in you, who's going to hold you accountable, but who's going to guide you along the way. Don't do what I did. Hired a, I hired a PR person, I hired a web person, I hired everybody to go do things. Nobody was working on me. No one helped me to understand strategy and process and business and business language and none of it. None of it. No one helped me to do that. How to properly network. I mean, there's a whole process to that. Properly networking, it'll change your entire life. <laughs> you do it right. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. Absolutely. And investing in a business coach or a mentor, you will mm -hmm. make your, your investment back. Mm -hmm. or, you know, at least, you know, it's the best thing you could ever do. And it Agreed. expedites your learning curve. Um, substantially does. and shortens your time of being up and ready and successful. So.
Exactly. Yes, exactly. I agree. I would have, if I knew that, I would have done that in the beginning. It would have saved me thousands, thousands of dollars and literally years of wasted energy, wasted time. Uh, just, it would have saved me a lot. Now, today, even though I mentor and I coach others, I am never without a qualified mentor and a coach. And I have more than one. So that's something that as you continue to evolve, you'll eventually need more than one who specializes in certain areas. Yep. Same here, same here. Um, because we don't know what we don't know. And um, we're, we have blinders on. And like, I, I always like this. I can't do it, <laughs> but everybody else can. And, and else so can that's what the yeah. mentor does, is help you point out those things that you can't see yourself. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, well, thank you so much for your tips and advice. And uh, Natasha, thank you for your generosity. You've got an amazing gift for everybody. Would you like to explain what it is? Absolutely. And so one of the things I wanted to make sure is that um, nurses that were crossing into the business arena or that are currently in it, you had additional resources that you can lean on. And so all of our empowered nurses will have access to the IBC Academy to the Moving Forward Business for Nurses inside the IBC Academy. It's an online program where you can take this information, refer to it, and use it to not only catapult your business, but even to launch it, if that so be the case. And so you'll be provided with the access code Empowered Nurses for the ibcacademyonline.com. Oh, that's so nice of you. Thank you. And we'll put um, information below this video so you can access it. But again, thank you for your generosity and your time and your words of wisdom. They were, you know, just fantastic. And we so appreciate all the good that you do in the world and how you're helping nurses and other business owners. Wonderful. Thank you so much. It's truly my honor to serve and I look forward to continuing to be here. I've been here 18 years. I'm ready for 80 more. <laughs> well, thank you. And thanks everybody for tuning in and we'll catch you on the next video. Thank you.